as she said, I, as she mentioned, my name is Michelle Gozum. I'm the director of marketing for Conergy Asia and ME or Asia and the Middle East. So I'll be talking to you today and sharing with you some of our experiences related to a project um, that we have already built in Thailand. It's a 21 megawatt um, ground-mounted solar PV system. So today's um, presentation is structured mainly along three lines. So I'll start off with an introduction to Conergy and the Thai solar market. Then I'll proceed directly to the case study. And I'll also talk about some of the lessons learned about um, our experiences in building this plant. So just to maybe give you a very brief introduction to the Thai solar energy market so that you'll better appreciate our project um, once you understand the context. Um, oh, sorry. T to start off, um, I'll be... So just a, a brief introduction on Conergy. We have a presence in Asia Pacific and the Middle East. Specifically, we have offices in Singapore, which is our head office, regional head office. We have um, an office in the Philippines, an office in the UAE, Thailand, and also Japan, um, and also Australia. But Australia is a, a unit we cover separately. So Conergy is to make a long story short, we are a system supplier of all the key components required to build a solar park. And because we provide the related services, you can consider us an, a, a one-stop shop, an EPC provider, when it comes to building large-scale solar systems. So this is a sample of um, the projects we've built in the region. So what you see primarily in the top row are projects um, we've built in Thailand. So all the projects um, that you see there have generally been commissioned. These are connected to the grid. But in addition to these projects, we are still working on a number of projects. So like let's say in Thailand, we are working on um, five more different sites, which add up to 50 megawatts. And we are also working on a project in the Philippines. Um, and then these are other projects we've built in other parts of the world. So as you can see, based on these examples, Conergy really is a specialist when it comes to building large-scale solar systems, be it ground-mounted systems or rooftop systems. Okay, so um, going back to an introduction to the Thai market. So basically, the Thai solar market was driven by government policies, which started in 2007. They had the PPA approach, meaning um, you know, companies had to apply to the government to build these large-scale systems. So to start off, the, the policy was limited to large-scale systems, so megawatt-scale systems. And then the government obviously reviewed the applications, and they awarded PPAs, so which are guaranteed power purchase agreements, with these applicants. So with the PPA, basically it's a guarantee that all the output from the solar projects they would build would be bought, and it would be bought at an agreed-upon price. So the first phase of that system was with an 8 baht adder. By adder, what it means is it's 8 baht on top of the grid rate. So if it's, um, you know, if it's an off-peak period when you're feeding to the grid, it would be, let's say, 8 baht plus the 8 baht premium. Or else if you're feeding at, um, a pre at noon time, let's say, which is a peak period, then for every kilowatt hour that you sold to the grid, you would enjoy the base rate, or let's say it would be 10 baht, and add um, the 8 baht. But then, so that was in phase one, and that would be valid for 10 years. But in phase two of this, the policy, they lowered the adder, the, so the add-on rate, to 6.5 baht. Um, and obviously, that follows the reduction in solar prices anyway. So it does not, it did not compromise the returns for the investor. So essentially the rates, um, so for most of the plants we have built in Thailand, they're pretty much pegged on the rate of, you know, 33 US cents per kilowatt hour. So you can imagine those investors in Thailand have received good returns on their investments. But since then, there, um, the policy has evolved such that they're now incentivizing rooftop systems. So there's like 200 megawatts on rooftop systems, um, which is more distributed. So these are s smaller systems. Um, 
the application process just opened up a few weeks ago, so we've really not realized any projects related to the um, additional policy of the Thai government. Um, and then uh, in terms of the, uh, the other um, benefits related to Thailand, it's an ideal location for solar because they um, have good irradiation levels, which you can see there, um, you know, very good returns, very good output on the solar modules. Um, and also they have the policies, the mechanism they put in place to um, complement the feed-in tariff system, uh, the, the PPA system, and the other system was really very straightforward. So, you know, once you get the PPA at hand, you know, it was very clear you had to build by a certain date um, and, you know, you had to com commission. But otherwise, all of these products entered the country, you know, duty-free and generally we've not had any problems with that everything you know the process um, was properly um, put in place by the government so the mechanism to enjoy the benefits related to um, renewable energy were properly put in place also and also because of the number of projects being built solar projects being built in Thailand the banks in Thailand are now very comfortable with the technology. Um, projects, as we've seen, um, have been supported by many different banks um, for their financing requirements. So really, when you look at all of these four factors, the attractive policy incentive, um, the ideal um, natural conditions in the country, the smooth application process, and a very, very good support from the financing environment, that created a, a good, healthy ecosystem for large-scale solar projects to thrive. And that's why Conergy has been quite successful in Thailand. We've built, uh, we have closed as much as 100 megawatts uh, with 50 megawatts commissioned and 50 megawatts still under construction. So moving on now to the case study. Um, so this is a 21 megawatt park um, that we built already um, both so it's um, we closed this in 2012 um, late 2012 but we really commissioned we've completed the installation by May um, with the first 10 megawatts um, done in June and the second meg the second set of 10 should be commissioned very soon so it's a 21 megawatt system broken down in two sites. Um, as I've said, um, the first site has been commissioned, second it will be commissioned soon. Um, the, the, they're located in Sufanburi, Kanchanaburi provinces in Thailand. Um, they use primarily Conergy equipment, um, especially for the modules and the mounting systems and obviously Conergy services. And they also use central inverters, German central inverters. And um, the size of the park is 500,000 square meters. And both sites should realize 15,700 um, tons of CO2 savings per year. So just to tell you a little bit about how this project was structured, um, so Conergy was the EPC provider. So we did the overall system engineering and design, project engineering. We also obviously did the procurement. Um, uh, and, and because most of the components were Conergy components, um, so it, you know we were responsible for the procurement of the main of the main pieces, the modules, the inverters, and the mounting systems. Um, also, we provided the the project management and the mon supervision of the you know as the installation was progressing. But definitely, when it comes to the commissioning, we had that was really the heart of what we did because. These were Conergy components, so we knew best how to commission them. So we worked with the partner to commission um, these sites. Our partner in this case were um, Annex Power and Ensis, so one site related to each partner. So these partners did the local engineering support, so they did the civil works, um, the mechanical design, they did the installations as well, and they worked with us in the commissioning, and they obviously are owning the O&M contract. So when it comes to operations and maintenance, they'll be the customer's contact. So these are, again, some more details on the site. So you see the two sites there. So we have a site seven and a site five. Um, so these sites were former rice paddies. 
um, we were able to install both sites within six months. So the mechanical installations was completed from October 2012 to March 2013. And then, as I've said, the first site was commissioned already in June, and in October, the next site. Um, yeah, there's, there's a bit of a lag between the installation time and the commissioning time, because for commissioning, you need to have the PEA, the Provincial Electorate, the provincial electricity authority of Thailand to be present and you know it took a while to schedule the person to be on ground but um, truthfully it really didn't matter for us because our contracts our contract completion dates were pegged on mechanical completion rather than commissioning dates so you know um, so it's not like we were delayed in any way because it, it takes it, it takes a lot of coordination work to get the authorities um, to come on site and work with you um, so, and really, the objective of the customer here was to take advantage of the feed-in tariffs of the PPA system, the adder system, um, because they realized that good money could be made by investing in a solar park. So, in this particular um, project, the the incentive was based the base rate plus an adder of 6.5 so the customer is able to avail of the phase two part of the incentive system um, and the other good thing um, about this project is it enabled the local community to enjoy clean energy so you know uh, at least for this small area um, those communities won't have to contend with let's say coal plants or you know diesel generators so um, it's good for the community so this just shows you um, the first step that we had to go through in the construction. So we had to do civil works. Um, you know, so it, by civil works, we mean um, creating shelters for the site office, creating the warehouses, creating the boundaries and protecting the boundaries because obviously you don't want pilferage, you don't want unauthorized people to get access to the site. Um, we also had to um, build roads, both roads inside the site and outside it, um, because this, was, this is a very rural area in the former rice paddy fields. And we also had to do ground leveling and, and ground land compacting, um, because if you don't do compacting properly, what can happen is after you install, let's say you put your piles, if you don't do the compacting properly, ev the system might just... Um, you know, shrink. I mean, it, it it will go down. It will be pulled down. So, and you don't want, you know, your installations to, you know, to go to go down bef be to a low level because, as you know, in Thailand they're subjected to floods. And although we've erected, you know, um, protection in place, you still want to keep the modules at a good height. So, land compacting is necessary, and obviously we've installed um, some water draining system some water draining systems. So for the civil works, um, this work was primarily done by our partners, but obviously in close collaboration with Conergy. Um, next are, is the mechanical installation. By mechanical installation, what it means is so once the land is ready, then you start um, you know, putting the piles. So the piles are the legs of the solar system. So these are galvanized steel piles, which we had to put um, in a straight row. So together with our partner, you know, we had to erect the piles and make sure they were adequately spaced and they, they, you had the constant spacing between them. And they but, but more importantly, they had to be properly aligned because if you don't properly align your piles, then, you know, the base rails won't fit properly and eventually you might cause, when you install, you, the, you know, you might cause bending on the modules and the, and bending is bad for the modules because if you destroy the frames of the modules, water can seep in, which can cause so much problems later on. And um, so we also did um, fence installation, as I've said. Um, so once the mechanical installation is done, next follows the electrical installation. So at this point, Conergy really had to get involved. So this means, you know, connecting the in the modules to you know to the inverters and to all the related electronic equipment you know to the SCADA system to the step up inverter step up transformer rather um, so really everything had to be in place so th this part really Conergy has to get involved um, so this then now just gives you um, a snapshot of the schedule if you look at it many tasks were done in parallel because um, basically the customer 
only decided, I mean, only signed the contract really very close to their to the completion date deadline. So, you know, once because the, when they first received the PPAs, it comes with a certain COD commission, you know, commissioning date or completion date. And the customer here, um, I, I suppose they, they wanted to really understand the technology and go through a number of vendors before they selected their final vendors. They, it took a while for them to decide on the vendors. So by the time we had got the signed contract, we only really had six, seven months prior to the COD date. So that's why Conergy, we had no choice but to do many tasks in parallel. So if you look at it, especially in the first half, so much, everything was done in parallel. Um, but then in the end, we did make our deadline. So, you know, everything turned out well. Um, so some project issues that I'd like to share with you from an EPC perspective is, um, so the first one um, that, that's important to know is, you know, you always have, it's always important to build a good working relationship with the customer. This was particularly key, important because in this project, this was the first time we worked with this customer and this was the first time this customer ever got into solar because this customer actually is in the broadcasting business. They, had the, the, they own a TV station um, so, and they had many different other lines of business. But so this is the first project they did on solar. So it was important, you know, for us to make them understand the technology so that they were able, so that they had the proper expectations in place. Um, and, you know, they understand, they understood the process, right? Um, then also it's important to adapt to the local cultural requirements. I'll show you a picture later on. Um, in one of the sites, there actually was a banyan tree. It's a beautiful, big, and very old banyan tree. So for us, you know, um, Originally, before doing the site visit, we thought we could put panels in that area. But eventually, when we looked, when we did the site visit, and after we spoke to the local community, we learned that this particular banyan tree was, you know, is held in, held, is held in high regard by the locals. You know, the locals pray to it. So we decided not to cut it down. So we now had to build modules away from it. So we kept the banyan tree. So that's an example of, you know, having to understand the local requirements and being sensitive to those local requirements. Then, um, obviously, when it comes to the civil works, you know, many third-party suppliers are in place because Conergy only really mainly um, supplied the main components. So, you know, when even... So, in the selection of the other sub-components um, involved in the solar park, you know, it's always important to look to make sure that support can be extended by those third-party suppliers. Because if not, if there are delays, then ultimately it will fall on our responsibility because we're the APC contractor. Then, because of the tight schedule, as I've said, we've had to work on the two sites in parallel. Um, and then, and obviously there are risks involved in that, but in, it's a good thing we've built other parks pr previously, so we knew exactly how to manage that. And then uh, another interesting learning for us is for the final grid approval, in as much as Conergy has, let's say, the commissioned many plants already around Thailand, the PEA person they would send is different for each province. So never assume that once you've done um, a grid connection, it's always the same. It's never the same because you're always working with a different sub-authority and it's a different person. So you have to, you know, always accommodate, you know, their needs and their requirements. So overall, in terms of the results, um, I would say, given that Conergy, because of Conergy's prior local experience, um, that brought about savings for the customer. So prior to working on this, we worked on four other plants. So obviously, as you build one plant, you learn so much. You learn how to, you know, choose the most appropriate cables. You know how to optimize cable lengths. You know how to, you know, build the best design for a customer. So I would say this particular cost, customer was able to benefit from that. Um, and then also as we, in the case of this customer, um, one thing we've learned to do is standardize the design and also standardize the tasks um, in how, let's say, you construct the inverter house and how you do the civil works. So in the case of this customer, these two sites are the first out of seven sites. So what we have done also in the later projects is the inverter, the inverter house design and some of the civil works design that we've um, used for these projects, we will replicate in the other projects. So then 
you know, it just simplifies the work process. Um, and it also simpli simplifies the costings and it makes the costings very accurate because we've done it. Once you do it in, you know, a number of sites and if you just replicate that in another site, it's a win-win situation for both because you're really able to optimize um, the system and you're able to bring down your cost. Um, Oh, one other lesson learned for us is, um, so the mounting systems consists of, you know, galvanized steels for the piles and also the base rails are made from aluminum. In the first, one thing we learned was in the first shipment, um, somehow oxidation took place in the container. I suppose it's because, you know, these containers, depending on where they are in the ship, if let's say the container is at the top load, it's on the top of the ship of the ocean freight, you know, it gets to be extra hot inside. So in the first delivery of some of our mounting systems, there was actually oxidation on the surface, but that didn't affect the, um, the quality of the modules. It's not like you know, it affected the design of the rails. It just wasn't aesthetically pleasing. So eventually, um, it's a good thing we figured that out soon enough. So we eventually, for the next shipments, we made sure they were vacuum packed. So then we didn't have this problem anymore. So, but it's just an example of you know, some things to consider, you know, when you ship, let's say, aluminum products, um, you know, in steel containers and they're on sea for many days, you know, if not even a month um, or weeks, you know, it's something to consider. So this is, these are snapshots of the sites. So the first thick photo on top is the banyan tree I mentioned to you. So as you, if you look at it, we really had to um, build away from it so because one thing about solar is you must not build in an area wh which provides shading so you can't put solar panels underneath or very close to the banyan tree because at certain times of the day the banyan tree would have cast a shadow and when you have shadow on the module it cannot perform optimally it cannot perform at, it ma at its maximum capacity so you have to consider that so again this was an example of how we were sensitive to some of the cultural um, requirements um, then the picture on the side is you know some of our electronic stations then then you see more pictures on site so you see the module installations uh, and some of the office buildings so this concludes my presentation i i think i finished in good time um does anybody have any questions for me on this project okay yeah, well, in case if you don't have any questions, well, Conergy has a booth here um, at iGEM. We're at the Singapore Pavilion. Um, we're at booth B070. Um, so feel free to talk to us about your solar PV requirements. As I've said, Conergy is a German company that specializes in building large-scale solar systems, be it ground-mounted systems or rooftop systems.